Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life. In today's McDojo news, we're going to talk about how a martial arts instructor was sentenced to six years for fatally kicking an elderly man in a road rage incident in South Australia. Let's check out the story. A martial arts expert has been jailed after he fatally kicked a 7-year-old man in a road rage incident while his family watched in horror. Francois Joseph Gassibi was sentenced on Monday for the manslaughter of Brian Maxwell Richardson after he was previously found not guilty of the more serious charge of murder. Gassibi, age 32, was in the back of a taxi on West Terrace in Adelaide when his driver was cut off by 70-year-old Brian Richardson on April 1st of 2022. When Gassibi tried to break up a confrontation between the taxi driver and Richardson, who had left their cars in the middle of traffic, Richardson started pushing and punching him. Gassibi, who was 40 years younger than Richardson at the time and 10 centimeters taller, retaliated with devastating effect, the court heard. As Richardson's wife, brother, and sister-in-law watched on from the car, Gassibi, who later told the police that he had a background in martial arts, launched several blows at the older man before delivering a final kick to the chin, causing him to fall backwards and hit his head on the concrete. The post-mortem examination found the impact of his head hitting the roadway to be the fatal blow. Gassibi climbed back into the taxi and left while bystanders rushed to Richardson's aid. He was later pronounced dead by paramedics. Gassibi pleaded guilty to manslaughter but denied that he had murdered Richardson. South Australian Supreme Court Justice David Peake found Gassibi's kick was unlawful as it was not genuine self-defense and was a dangerous act that he should have realized risked seriously injuring or killing Richardson. However, he was not satisfied that his actions demonstrated a murderous intent. A psychological report found Gassibi had a troubled upbringing and was frequently subjected to physical assaults and racial abuse on account of his Lebanese heritage. He suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, which was exacerbated when his wife was severely assaulted by a, quote, large, psychotic man, forensic psychologist Richard Balfour found. Cassibi's hypervigilance and hyperarousal contributed to his state of panic during Richardson's, quote, unprovoked attack, lowering his moral culpability, Justice Peak found. The cocaine and alcohol circulating through his bloodstream and the temporary loss of vision in his only good eye from being punched and spat at also impeded his ability to act rationally and proportionately to the situation. Despite showing little contrition at the time, Gassibi had shown remorse for his actions during the case and was on the road towards rehabilitation, the judge said. Nevertheless, Judge Peake said he was deserving of a, quote, substantial punishment for the irreparable loss suffered by his victim's family and friends. Richardson's son, Shane, said his memories are, quote, beyond painful in a statement read out to the court. I've lost my dad, my best mate, he said. No more laughs, no more fishing together, no more fixing shit, no more brainstorming, no more anything. It's final, and I'll never see him again. I can only hope there is justice for dad. Justice Peake sentenced Gassibi to six years and nine months in prison. His non-parole period was set for four years and six months, backdated to his arrest. Gassibi blew a kiss to his parents in the public gallery as he was ushered out of court. His lawyer, Nick Vadez, told reporters outside his client was, quote, very remorseful and lamented that his initial guilty plea for manslaughter was not accepted which would have saved all the involved from a lengthy trial. Gassibi will be eligible for parole in October of 2026. Let's unpack that. So apparently this guy was partying. He was found with alcohol and cocaine in his system. He gets into a taxi cab and as he's riding in the backseat of the taxi cab, the taxi cab is cut off by a 70 year old man. The taxi cab driver and the 70 year old man both get out to get into a physical altercation and a road rage incident. The 70-year-old man has family members in the car watching this happen. Meanwhile, this guy who was drunk and high on cocaine is in the backseat of the taxi cab watching this go on. As he tries to break this up, the 70-year-old man punches him and spits on him. At that point, he starts beating on the old man, which led to a fatal kick that caused the old man to hit the back of his head on the concrete and die. That is a wild story. He then tries to put in a guilty plea for manslaughter, which was not accepted. It goes through trial, and then it was found to be manslaughter. We always hear that urban legend about registering your hands as deadly weapons. I even did a video about that and even talked about some of the facts and talked about where that actually is true. Yes, I know, it's crazy. There actually is a place where you are supposed to register your hands as deadly weapons. Watch that video. It seems the martial arts training here didn't have as big of an impact as the fact that he was drunk and also on cocaine. He also didn't get very much time for killing a man. I mean, 
it's 2023 now. He'll be eligible for parole in 2026. So who knows? He might be out in three years. But what's fascinating to me is there were all these different parties witness to what's going on. I mean, the taxi cab driver didn't have to get out of his taxi. The 70-year-old man didn't have to initiate this by cutting someone off and also getting out of his car. I mean, you're a 70-year-old man. Stay in the damn car. And of course, the 70-year-old man's family stayed in the car just watching this old man get into a fistfight. No one in that car thought for a second to go, you know what, maybe you should keep your old ass in the car because this isn't a good idea no matter how old you are, but now you're acting like a child to get into a fight on the side of the road. And unfortunately, that lapse of judgment on everyone's part equal the man dead. Which brings us to the question of the day. Have you yourself been involved in a road rage incident? Maybe you stayed in the car. Maybe you got out and fought. Maybe somebody got out while you stayed in the car. Or maybe you're the dick who decided to get out of your car and confront somebody who stayed in theirs. Tell us your road rage stories in the comment section below so that way I know you watch the entire video. As always, thank you all for the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, and of course, memberships. Keep the martial arts legit. My baby got robbed the other day by the generic So she wanted to learn some new form of this self-defense So she did her research and for rules, did online And found this tool said he could move shit with his mind He call himself Sifu Paul Zimmerman He got a dojo with a strip on your Cinnabon Now she spends all day trying to break boards with her thoughts But the only thing she's breaking is my little heart